This is a demonstration for your Maestro Air Forced Air Warming Unit. Your new unit should have arrived with the following components. The unit itself with the hose connected, a connection hook that we can use to secure our hose, We have a plate cover and a 4mm hex screw. This is required for the first setup of your Maestro Air to secure our power cord and keep it safe. We have a user manual and the power cord. Along with the hose being connected to the unit itself, we also have our navigation buttons at the top here, which we'll chat about a little bit later on. And around the back of our unit, We have a mounting option here, which can be used on an IV fluid pole or with our Maestro Air adjustable pole and basket. We have the area here, which we covered with the plate once we're ready. And this also has an HDMI inlet, which is used for servicing and technical purposes. Prior to the first use of your Maestro unit, we'll need to insert the power cord and cover it with the protection plate to keep this securely inserted. We have our new power cord, we have a hex key to secure the screw, we have our hex screw and the plate. We'll take this end of our cord and we'll pop this in, making sure that the pins align with each other. The bottom of the cord can come out the base of the unit. We can then take our plate to cover that port and we can insert the screw now with a little twist and use our hex key to tighten that in place. Once secure, this can remain in your unit and should only be required for removal for replacement of your cord or for technical purposes. To operate your Maestro Air unit, we can use this control panel. We have a power button to turn on and off the unit. We have a button to pause or silence alarms if they are triggered. And we have the plus and minus buttons here, which we can use to adjust the temperature range or enter an ambient air mode. We also have our three symbols and LED lights, which alert us to any alarms that are triggered if any issues with the unit occur. To turn on our unit, we must first provide power by switching on at the power supply. The LED light next to our power button is now lighted up and we're ready to turn on the unit. The unit will perform a self-test on startup, which will emit a short beep and all LED lights should light. We can see it's flashing at 38 degrees because this is the default temperature your unit will always start at. Once 38 degree temperature has been reached, this light will stop flashing. We can hear the unit has started blowing air towards our patient. And the light is now solid to indicate that we've reached this temperature of 38 degrees. If we're wanting to adjust this temperature, we can do so with the plus or minus buttons. Again, the LED is flashing as the unit warms up until this temperature. The LED has stopped flashing and we know that it's now reached a temperature of 43 degrees. To enter an ambient air mode, we can just move down to the symbol with the three wavy lines and this will start blowing an ambient air towards our patient. Our alarm LEDs down the side here will let us know any issues that occur when the unit is operational. 
We have an over temperature alarm and a technical or internal componentry failure alarm. If either of these alarms do trigger, your device will enter a standby mode and it will turn off the fan and the heater to make sure that your patient is well protected if there are issues occurring. We can refer to our user manual for a full description of what alarms may trigger with what issues, as these are described by a combination of beeps and lights at different intervals. The third alarm symbol down the bottom here is for your air filter replacement alarm. This will indicate once your air filter has had over 2000 hours of use and this will stay lit until the air filter has been replaced. To reset the top two alarms, once the trigger and issue has been rectified, we need to reset our unit, which we can do by turning on and off at our power supply. To turn off the unit, we can press the power button. The Maestro Air device can be used with a standard fleecy blanket or with a Maestro Air patient warming blanket, which goes underneath the patient and circulates warm air below them. For use with a general blanket, it is best to have one end of the blanket folded and one end with the opening. This is so we can place the hose into the open end of the blanket which will point it towards the folded end. We can then tuck in the sides around our patient or mattress and turn on our unit. Having the, the blanket tucked in this manner will ensure that airflow goes to the top of the blanket and around our patient but also means that there shouldn't be anything, any airflow coming from the sides or around the top, which means there should be less disruption or disturbance to our patient and any surgical drapes as well that might be applied. This technique also keeps the hose from any direct contact onto the patient as it's in the middle of this folded blanket. It should never be allowed to directly make contact with your patient's skin especially in a mobilized patient as they will be unable to move away from this heat source which could result in thermal burning. The Maestro Air also comes with this connection hook for helping to hang and secure the hose if desired. It can hang on to any part of this hose and just has to be pushed into place. It can then be used to hang the hose which should help reduce this being knocked or disturb your patient setup. If you're using the Maestro Air patient warming blanket, you'll have your blanket arrive in a folded fashion, which we can unfold on a nice flat surface, being sure to unfold the blanket completely so that our airflow accesses all the way around our patient. There's also a small plastic lining in here which can be used over your patient to secure them in position. The inlet for our Maestro Air hose is this circle here. There is another circle at the other end of this blanket. In case you open it up in a certain way and your patient's already set up, you can access the hose point from both ends of the blanket instead of having to reposition your patient or the table. With the blanket nice and flat, we can take the end of our hose and using this inlet here and a little gentle push, we are going to pop that into position. So that is now sitting nicely in there. With our Maestro air hose now firmly into the entrance port of the Maestro air blanket, we can go ahead and turn on our unit. 
We've positioned this hose to make sure that there is no obstruction for where it enters the blanket, as we want to be sure that the flow of air is able to access all open points of this blanket. We can see that starting to nicely inflate now. We can take our patient Derek who is helping today, and we can pop him on the blanket. We can cover Derek in a nice fleecy blanket if we desire, and this will keep him nice and toasty with the blanket blowing air all around underneath him. We should take good care with Derek as his face is in contact with this blanket and make sure we're regularly checking his eyes to ensure they're moist and lubricating them where required. When the unit is operational, we must take great care to ensure that there is no obstruction to the underneath of this unit. This is where all the airflow occurs and if there's any obstruction by foreign matter and dust or debris, then there may be an alarm triggered due to this. So it's always best to take care and that ensure that there is nothing obstructing the underneath of your unit. Your Maestral Air Unit should not require any major cleaning. However, if you need to spot clean the unit, always ensure that the power supply has been turned off and we want to make sure the LED next to the power button has no light to it to confirm this. Before cleaning, we always want to cool the unit to an ambient temperature, especially within our hose so it doesn't dry on any debris while cleaning. We'd like to use a lint-free cloth dampened with a diluted detergent and avoid this being dripping wet as that may introduce water into internal componentry. We can then use the dampened cloth to spot clean the unit, including the hose and the control panel. Being sure that while doing this, we do not tip the unit onto its side or upside down, as this will increase the risk for any liquid to be introduced to the internal component tree. Always allow the unit to completely air dry, including the hose, before putting this back into operation. If disinfection of your unit is required, we can use an isopropyl alcohol on a lint-free cloth, making sure that this is only slightly dampened to avoid any excess alcohol going into our unit. Again, allow the unit to air dry before putting back into use. The air filter on your Maestro Air can be easily replaced in clinic if required. Replacement will be indicated by the LED air replacement light turning on and emitting a beep. If this occurs, we want to make sure we have a soft surface to put our unit on as he'll be needing to go face down. Just use a nice fleecy blanket or something similar. Always ensure he's disconnected from any power supply for this process and we can put the unit on its front. You'll then see we have access to the air filter at the bottom here. Now that we have the Maestro unit lying face down on a soft surface, we can access the hex screws located in these two holes, which we'll need to remove before we can take out the air filter. We can use our hex key in here, turning to the left to loosen the screw. <clears throat> and same again on the other side. With the screws now loose, we should be able to remove the bottom cover from our device, taking care our screws don't drop out and are lost, which will reveal 
the internal air filter component tree. With the bottom cover now removed, we have our air filter exposed, which can be pulled towards you for removal. This can then be replaced with a new air filter. And the cover can be replaced. And we'll use our hex key to go back and tighten these screws. With the new air filter in place and the bottom cover reattached to the unit, we can now reposition this unit back into its standing position as we'll need to reset the air filter replacement alarm so that we can set the clock back to zero hours. Once the air filter has been replaced on your Maestro unit, we'll need to reset the air filter replacement alarm so the clock resets back to zero and it will alert us again once 2000 hours of use has been clocked on the new filter. We can do this by turning on the unit and we need to press and hold the plus and minus button and the alarm suppression button simultaneously. Once we have these three pushed and we press the standby button, the alarm has now been reset.